happy you could join me on my lunch break. Lucky for you, I brought enough bread for two. Today's loaf of bread comes to us from the theologian and mystic William Law, and he says, What could begin to deny self if there were not something in man different from self? Now, I know that's a strange line by itself, so let me give you a little bit of context here. There's an ongoing debate in spiritual circles, and especially when Buddhists are involved. And the debate centers around the question of whether or not there is a self. You see, there are sects of Buddhism that maintain a doctrine called Anaatman, and this doctrine basically states that there is no self. Now, we're not just talking about the superficial mind-constructed self. We're talking about any self whatsoever. According to these people, the feeling of selfness and of being that you and I and every other human being on earth experiences is merely a pattern of conditioned thoughts and ideas. And if you can pierce through that conditioned bundle of thoughts and ideas, you find nothing. In other words, beneath all the superficial layers of identity, according to these people, there is nothing else there. There's no bedrock. There's no ultimate self or presence. There's no watcher, no thinker. These things are merely illusions. That is the Buddhist stance of Anatman. Now, as you know from watching these videos, I don't subscribe to that model. Personally, I have experienced myself as the self, which the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita refer to as the Atman. And I'm not 100% in on this belief, because all I have is my experience. And who's to say that my experience is authentic and not merely another delusion. So I haven't dismissed the possibility that I'm wrong and that the Buddhists are right and that there is really no true self. But whenever I give this issue serious thought, I always come back to the same argument. If there is no self, if it really is an illusion, then who or what is being fooled by the illusion? See, you can't talk about illusions unless there is someone being fooled by the illusion. The word illusion implies that there are people, or at least one individual somewhere, who is being duped. And so when I hear Buddhists and other mystical types say that there is no true self, no authentic self, no ultimate divine self, I always come back to this argument. And then, of course, I found this awesome quote from William Law, which expresses exactly my argument. What could begin to deny self if there isn't something within us that is separate from self? Now this can be confusing because William Law uses the term self, I believe, interchangeably with ego here. He's saying, what could begin to deny the ego personality, this superficial construct that we all identify with, what could begin to deny that if there isn't something within us that is distinct and separate from that conditioned identity. And it's the same with the Buddhists who tell me that there is no self, that I'm deluded. I always ask, if I don't exist, then what or who is being deluded? I just can't find my way out of this debate without siding on the side of the Atman, the Logos, the divine spark, this is the core, the center that I've been talking about, and it is more you than you are, and it is also everything at the same time. This is exactly what Plotinus was talking about a few videos back when he said, as soon as we forget to be individuals, we become everything. We pierce the entire universe, because that's what we are, or at least that's what I think I am. Can't really speak on your behalf now, can I? Well, that's it for me. Thanks once again for keeping me company on my lunch break. Hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to live well, my friends.